It's a friendly atmosphere here. Uh, well, good afternoon. I'm happy to be here this afternoon to present my nominee, be, nominee to be Secretary of Defense, uh, Congressman Dick Cheney of Wyoming. Dick is a widely respected man of principle, served his country with distinction for many years. I've known him as a chief of staff, government manager, all under President, President Ford, 75 and 76. I work with him closely uh, as, uh, since he's been a part of the Republican leadership. In both the executive branch and in Congress, he's dealt with the problems of national defense. He struggled with the budget, certainly as every president has to do, and he's weighed the difficult national defense priorities that have come before the Congress. He's been a member of the Intelligence Committee for, I think, five years and a leader of that in that area. I've heard his thinking on arms control, Central American policy, strategic defense posture, and on the difficult challenges that he knows he faces of uh, reforming procurement process in the Pentagon. He's a thoughtful man, a quiet man, a strong man, approaches poli public policy with vigor, uh, determination, and diligence. And this afternoon, we discuss the defense needs of this nation and the heavy responsibilities that go with being Secretary of Defense. Uh, Dick Cheney is a trusted friend and advisor, and I'm convinced that he's going to be a great leader of our nation's military forces. And now I'd like to ask him to, uh, to uh, say a few words, and then he and I uh, will be glad to re respond to a few questions. So Dick, welcome aboard, and thank you for undertaking this very complicated and difficult assignment. You'll do great. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. Obviously, uh, things have moved rather rapidly in the last uh, 24 hours. I'm honored to be asked by the President to join his administration. I look forward very much to working with him, and especially also with uh, Brent Scowcroft, who's an old friend of many years standing, and with Jim Baker, who's an old friend of many years standing, in the uh, difficult assignment ahead. And uh, I think the, uh, the next four years hold uh, significant challenge in terms of U.S. defense policy and foreign policy, and uh, I am glad to be a part of the team and eager to get to work in terms of helping the President address some of those very important issues. Two questions. First, could you give us an update on your health, and also what can you tell us about the depth of the expertise you feel you have on defense? Well, first of all, with respect to my health, uh, I have in the past been a heart patient. Uh, many of you know I underwent bypass surgery in August of last year. Uh, I was, after that surgery, uh, back at work in about three weeks. Uh, I skied at Christmas time uh, at uh, Vail, if anybody's curious. And it was very, skiing was very good at Vail at Christmas time. And uh, I talked uh, just this afternoon with my cardiologist, who's followed my case for uh, several years, and uh, to make certain he was aware of this, and uh, so that uh, he would be in a position to say, as he has, as he did tell me just today, that there's absolutely no medical reason why I cannot undertake this assignment. Uh, I have no restrictions at this point uh, in terms of my own activities. Uh, with respect to my background in the defense area, it's an issue that I've, a uh, set of issues that I've been interested in for a long time. Obviously had some uh, exposure to them during the Ford years when I served uh, as White House Chief of Staff and sat in on all the National Security Council meetings. Uh, I've had an active interest in it in the Congress and uh, currently serve as the senior Republican on the Budget Subcommittee of the Intelligence Committee, which authorizes all of our intelligence programs and the activities of many defense agencies, such as the National Security Agency, Defense Intelligence Agency, all of the tactical intelligence programs uh, across all the services in the Pentagon. So obviously there, there are areas that I need uh, to know and that I'll have to work hard on to master, but I feel that I do have uh, a depth of understanding now in very specific areas that come within the general jurisdiction of the Defense Department and national security in general. Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Helen and then Terry. You, you said out of that, that uh, Senator Tower was the best qualified for this job. Where does uh, Congressman Cheney stand in this uh, priority? Uh, I said that on I said that on uh, December whatever it was, and now we're in March uh, whatever it is, and as of today. Dick Cheney is the best 
and the proper choice. Uh, do you agree with, with uh, the Vice President in his harsh indictment of the vote on the tower? I haven't read the harsh indictment. I expect he felt it as strongly as many of the senators having served in the Senate. But uh, look, that's history. We're moving forward with the new nominee. I told the senators yesterday when they called, uh, both Senator Mitchell and Senator Nunn, I think Marlin had a little release on that, that I was going to work with the Congress. Uh, Dick Cheney and I have discussed that. He's confident he can work with the Congress, both Senate and House. And so there's no point in my dwelling on uh, uh, what happened yesterday. I've got my own views about it. But uh, we got a big problem out here, and we need to work cooperatively in defense. Uh, with the Senate and with the House, and we're going to do just that uh, as uh, Dick Cheney is confirmed. Yeah, and then I'll be back in the middle. Mr. President, you said when you originally picked your cabinet that you didn't want to pick anybody from the House or Senate because you didn't want to deplete the ranks of Republicans in Congress. Now you pick Mr. Cheney. What happened to that rule? This is the exception that proves that rule. <laughs> yeah, John. For Mr. Cheney, for Mr. Cheney oh, good. Uh, John you said many times that you've enjoyed your work in Congress. Why would you give up the post on the uh, leadership ladder uh, in the House? Are you frustrated because you think that the Republicans are going to be in a minority position uh, ad infinitum, or why have you suddenly decided now to go into the executive branch? Well, I, uh, first of all, John, I'm optimistic about the future of the Republican Party in Congress. I think we will become a majority within the next few years. Uh, obviously, I've loved the House of Representatives. I've enjoyed it immensely. It, uh, I thought that uh, that's where I would spend the bulk of my political career. But uh, when the President asks you to consider a proposition such as this one, you have to take it seriously. And when you look at the challenge that's involved, uh, the importance uh, that he assigns to the problems that have to be addressed in this area, and uh, the, the, the basic attraction of taking on a difficult task uh, after I agonized over it, and I did agonize, it was not an easy decision, I decided that I would, in fact, accept uh, the post as Secretary of Defense. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, can you